This video is sponsored by ZZZ Projects. Ever felt like your code runs slower than it should? Like there is no way that this is normal? What am I doing wrong? That's a feeling that we as Entity Framework developers know too well. What if there was a way to easily multiply your app's performance, making everything run smoother and faster? Well, today we're unveiling how you can achieve just that. Curious? Then let's get into it. In the last video, we discussed improving our data insertion algorithm with an amazing tool provided to us by ZZZ Projects. That one was great already, but working with databases is not just throwing data in. There is a multitude of operations we need to do on a daily basis, and more often than not, all of them are way too slow to be usable. This is what we plan to explore today, while hopefully learning proper coding techniques and improving our project's performance. And for that, we need to start with a big one, like saving the things we changed. First up, bulk save changes. This method transforms the traditional save changes approach. Instead of processing each change one by one, it handles all changes in bulk, reducing the number of database round trips significantly. Let's see it in action. Well, we'll be working today in the same project that we did in the last video. So make sure to open that project again in Visual Studio to get going. If you don't have that project, then make sure to get back to the previous video and follow along there. Or, well, if you really don't want to, although you should, you can just download the project in the description below as well. So don't worry. Before we start, we need to make a slight change to our project. In the last video, we set up our app with a SQLite database. More precisely, we configured our project to create them itself. This was to simplify the process and eliminate the need for extra development time. However, this time we don't want to limit our app in that way. Instead, we're going to set up a proper SQL database. So let's get started with that. First, go to the SQL Server download page and choose the Express Edition. This will be more than enough for our needs and has the added benefit of being free. You can use the other versions if you prefer, we just chose this one. Run the installer and follow the prompts. Choose the features you want to install. In our case, we'll leave them at the default settings. Configure the instance settings. These can also remain default. Set the server authentication to SQL Server and Windows authentication mode. Add your user account to the SQL Server administrators. This usually sets up a by itself, just confirm that it's correct. And there you go. That should be it for this part. Now we need some way to manage it. For that, we will be using the SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS. Navigate to the download page of SSMS and install it correctly on your system. Once installed, open SSMS and connect to your server. As you can see, it found it already. Now right click on the databases folder and choose new database to create a new database. Follow the prompts to configure your database. And there we go. So what now? Well, not much actually. We just need to redirect our program to use this server instead. To do that, go back to Visual Studio and start by installing the SQL Server package. Now replace this line in your AppDB context file with this new one connecting to your local server. By the way, make sure to include both trusted connection and trusted server certificate. This will let your app know that the server is trustworthy. Great, now with this we should be ready to go. In our case, migrations won't be needed as we are using ensure deleted and ensure created. So we should be able to get it working right away. Let's test this with the code from our previous video. And oh, it seems like there's something wrong, we're getting an error that says cannot insert explicit value for identity column in table customers when identity insert is set to off. This might seem puzzling at first, but let me explain what's happening here. In our previous video, we used the bulk insert method to add customers to our database. This method automatically populated the customer ID property with the identity column value returned from the database. This is a key detail because in Entity Framework Core, when an entity has a non-zero customer ID, EF Core attempts to insert that value into the database. However, our database is set up such that the customer ID column is an identity column. 
This means that SQL Server is responsible for generating a unique value for this column every time a new row is inserted. The error we're encountering occurs because we're trying to insert a specific value into an identity column, which isn't allowed unless identity insert is turned on, and in our case it's off. The simplest solution is to create a new list of customers. When we create new customer entities, their customer ID properties will be set to the default value, which is typically zero for an integer. This tells Entity Framework Core that these entities are new and that it should let the database generate the customer ID. So to fix our issue, all we need to do is recreate the customer list just before we try to insert it into the database again, like this. This approach ensures that all the customer ID values are set to their default, allowing Entity Framework Core to handle the identity column correctly without any conflicts. Great, if we run this again, there we go, it runs fine. Now we get to the real fun. After having some issues with the save changes method, let's see how much smoother it'll be to run the bulk save changes method. Once we are ready, we can start by creating a new method down here. Call it something like bulk save changes demo, should be fine. In here, we will make a small comparison between the bulk method and the built-in standard method, just as we did with insert in the previous video. So first create a list of customers and populate it with around a thousand customers, like so. Then we need to reset our database again. Since we are going to be doing this a lot, let's create quickly a little helper method here called reset database that does just this. So here it deletes, then creates it again. Now just call it down in this method. Great. Now we get to set the test up. So start by starting our stopwatch, then use add range to add the customers and use the bulk save changes method to save them to the database. Make sure to stop again and write the time to the console with a little message like so. Great. Now let's do the same, but for the built-in save changes method. For that, just reset the database again, restart the stopwatch, add range and save changes here. Then finish again by stopping the watch and writing the results to the console. Recreate the customer list again, like we did before. Now, before we test it, to make this comparison fair, we need to first JIT compile it. Now compiling it isn't more than just running it once before we make the test, as we are going to stop the previous methods from running and this test will be the first time it will run in this execution. We just need to run it once here and that should suffice. Just make sure to reset the database before and after to have a nice clean slate. And that'll be it for our first test. Let's see how it looks. Make sure to call the method in the main method up here, run it, and there it is. See, quite a bit faster. Now execution times can naturally vary a lot each time we run because the context can vary quite a bit. In this case, for example, we run this program against a local database with a customer class that only contains two properties, ID and name. As you can imagine, this kind of a task is quite unlikely to happen in a real world scenario. However, real world scenarios is where these bulk operations excel at. Let's take a quick look at this fiddle here, for example. Making use of quite a few more properties and naturally not connecting to the server that lives on the same machine. A scenario like this is much more akin to what you would expect to see in your day-by-day -day work life. And if we give this one a run, we can clearly see how the difference between the two is exceptionally greater. This is almost a 10x difference right there. And let me tell you, this only gets better the more we add to this. So pretty clear advantage there, I would say. In any ways, this concludes bulk save changes. What's next? Well, inserting data is important, but that has already been done in the last video. So we'll skip over it now. This means that we're going to go straight to bulk update. Well, updating data in mass can be a resource heavy task, but with bulk update, the process is streamlined, reducing both time and system load. We want that. That sounds great. So let's try it. We'll try to speed through this so this video doesn't get to 10 hours or so. Let's go. Start by creating a new method like the bulk update demo method. 
As we want to update our data in our database, let's make sure we have a database ready to be updated. Well, we just created a method that does that. Since it ends with a resulting populated database, might as well we make use of that and call it right here. Now that our database is ready, let's prepare our data to be updated. Let's do that by creating a new list, taking our customers here and updating each one with a new addition here. Now let's test this. You know the drill, stop the stopwatch, use the convenient bulk update method with the list we just created, stop the stopwatch and print to the screen. Nice. Now the same thing for the built-in method. To be on the same page, Let's call the save changes method again. And this time, as there is no specific update method available, we need to do that manually as in finding each customer updated and move to the next one. And once we're done, we'll again use the save changes method from before. Does work just less conveniently. In any way, let's wrap this up and try it out. Run, and there it is. Both did their job, just one was a bit better at it. Okay, that seems promising for sure, but now I need to delete some content. How would I go about that? So next one is bulk delete. It's all about efficiency. Deleting large data sets often slows down systems, but bulk delete simplifies this process. Here's how it stands out from conventional deletion methods. Set up a new method, something like bulk delete demo. All of these method names are pretty original as you can see. In this case, as we want to delete data, we need a ready to go database again. So like before, let's call the save changes method, create a selection of, well, all of them to delete. This should do and prepare our test. First as always the bulk method. So start the watch, call the bulk delete method with the customers to be deleted, stop the watch and write to the console. Great, this is getting easier to code, isn't it? So next again, call the save changes method to prepare our database, restart the clock and try to replicate the bulk delete method with built-in ways. Get the range that you want. That'll be our entire database in our case. Call remove range on them with them and save the changes again. Then finish up stopping the timer and writing to the console the results. Let's bet which one's going to be faster this time. Leave your comment down below. If you lose, you need to create a new account just to subscribe again. <laughs> so, all right, let's run this. Oh, wait, this wasn't supposed to happen. Never mind, was just joking. As expected, it ran faster again. Well then, let's just move along and speed this up. Let's tackle the bulk merge method next. Bulk merge or absurd is a combination of insertion and updating. It's perfect for situations where you need to update existing records or insert new ones. Create a new method, call it bulk merge demo, set up your database with the save changes demo method, prepare the data to merge, something like this, and start a competition. Start the clock, call bulk merge with the data to be merged, stop the clock and put the console and the result in there, obviously. That was quick. Well, next, set up the database again with save, changes, demo, restart the clock. Now, as there is also no dedicated merge method built in, we need to follow a process that somewhat mimics that, like so, where we go through the database and merge the existing one with our merger list. Then, as always, save changes, stop the clock and print out the result. And yes, this is faster. Everything is faster. I don't know how they do a better job than Microsoft, but it's Really clearly an ad advantage here. Now that we got the merging method done, all we have left is synchronize and some filtering. And let me spoil you the results, or will I? So bulk synchronize them. This method ensures that your database accurately mirrors the provided entities, maintaining data integrity and consistency. Sounds good? Let's see it then. This one's easier as there is no built-in equivalent. So let me just show you how nice it is. So create your method with a name like bulk synchronized demo, create a starting database, a list of customers to sync, and why not let's stop watch this one too. And now here bulk synchronize with the data you give it. What does it do? Well, in short, 
All rows that match the entity key are updated. Non-matching rows that exist from the source data are inserted. Non-matching rows that exist in the database are deleted. So yes, it synchronizes your database with whatever you feed it. Neat, right? So yeah, round it up and let's run it to see how it performs. And yep, quite good. Nothing really to compare against here though, but it's really nice to know that we have that available. But now, after this whole video, there is a lingering question that comes to mind. Yes, this is fast, but do I really need this? Like, are those few milliseconds of improvement really worth it? Well, it depends. Consider a scenario where you're dealing with massive data sets, like migrating data or syncing databases. Here, bulk operations aren't just a convenience, they are a necessity. The speed and efficiency gains are undeniable. However, it's important to understand the context. Bulk operations are powerful, but they may not always be the best choice for every situation. For instance, in case where you need to perform complex business logic on each record, traditional methods might be more suitable, as having to go and do everything manually, so to speak, will give you better control over the process. The key is to evaluate your project's needs and constraints. Understand your data, the frequency of operations and performance requirements. This will guide you in making an informed decision about whether to integrate bulk operations or just keep your original logic. Nonetheless, if you are in a position where you are allowed to experiment a bit, I would no doubt at least give it a try. Worst case scenario? You make your app a bit faster and learn a new skill along the way. We've covered a lot today. From the basics of entity framework extensions to the details of each bulk operation method. It's clear that these tools have the potential to transform how you handle data operations in Entity Framework Core. Faster, more efficient and more scalable. That's the power of bulk operations. As we wrap up, I encourage you to share your thoughts and experiences. Have you used their methods in your projects? What was the impact? Do you have other ways of improving your app's performance? Let us know in the comments down below. And don't forget, if you want to learn more about insertion methods in a bit more detail, make sure to check out our previous video where we went deep into comparing standard built-in methods to build insertion. You'll be amazed at how much it affects the speed of your app. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and share this video with somebody who will profit from it as well. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel for more content like this. We're always looking to explore new topics, so let us know in the comments what you'd like to see next. Happy coding and see you in the next video.